before I get started, I want to say this real quick. Uh, we don't do no selling on the Sabbath, but people have been asking me about the shirts that I have on. These are KHM shirts. If y'all are interested, you can email me. And then after the Sabbath, I'll go ahead and help you all out. This one here says, living the rest life. Yeah. This is Exodus 31 and 16. Wow. All right, so if you're interested in here, we got this. Right now, we're doing part four. The name of the uh, lecture series is what? No, no, no. Say it right. Come on. Somebody got this. Good thing we're not quiet. It's <laughs> messed up. So it's El Shaddai, Yod Hey Wav Hey, El Elyon, three of a kind, or one in the same. So we're going to finish it today, and I'm going to ask y'all, what is the answer? All right? King Khan? Uh. All right, now, before I jump into this, does anybody know where we left off at? This is the last slide I was at. What was the last point that was made? And I know this is, what, almost a month ago, right? Yeah. Some time ago. Um, we see how elephant your memory is. Where we left off at? Anybody, real quick, and I'm going to move forward. This is the interactive. Was it uh, the stairwell of, jo of Jacob? Um, now nah, we passed that. That was good. That was good. Oh, it's, oh, no, it's them and them. Say it one more time. Is Yah the son of El? Is Yodi Wafe the son of El? Um, we were past that. That was good. We was past that, but that's good. Say so y'all keeping notes though, okay? Um, I mean it's up here, but <laughs> you looking like this, and the answer is right in front of them. <laughs> you see that? If you want to hide something, put it in an obvious place. <laughs> So, Isaiah reveals the arm and hand of yod heh Elohim, and this has been the theme throughout the pre-exilic period. Now, I'm going to reveal a lot of good information in here, okay? A lot of good information, but I'm going to try to go through as fast as possible because I want to end it today, okay? I had to take so much stuff out of it. I had to go back and say, man, this is good, but I got to take it out. We'll be here all day. Some people said we don't care, but we got to be mindful because some of y'all get hungry quick. Right? That's that melanin stomach y'all got. All right. <laughs> All right. So let's get started with this. So I ended off here. And if you go back and watch the video, I'll kind of sum this up. But what I want to do is touch on a couple of these scriptures and move forward. Okay? Is that all right? Yeah. All right. So text reference, Isaiah 40 and 10. Let's grab it. Oh, uh, the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, verse 10. Behold, God, Elohim, come with might, and his arm rules for him. Wait. Who come with might? Yah Elohim. Yah Elohim come with might and his what? Arm rules for him. His arm. Okay, keep going. Behold, his reward is with him mm. and his recompense before him. Okay, and uh, next verse, 51 and 9. Okay, he got it. Okay. You got it. No, you got it. Okay. Right. Awake, awake, put on strength, O arm of Yah. Wait. Put on strength, O arm of Yah. Uh -huh. Awake as in the days of old. As in when? The days of old. The days of old. Interesting. Keep going. The generations of long ago. Uh -huh. Was it not you who cut Rahab in pieces? Uh oh, wait. He did what? Cut Rahab in pieces. What's Rahab? Go ahead, look into that. That's deep. Remember, we went over this yep, earlier. If you don't see the imagery of fighting and warring and battling. Who pierced the dragon? Wait, who pierced what? The dragon. So the dragon is symbolic of what? Leviathan. Leviathan. The sea monster. This is imagery that is a parallelism in ancient Near Eastern culture. We also see it in other myths, such as Marduk. Mm -hmm. Who's Marduk? A demon. <laughs> she said a demon. The, or uh, to us, he would be an outside entity of Israelite culture, right. Right. but he is the patron deity of the Babylonians. Yes. And he's the one that fought Tiamat. Tiamat is representative of Leviathan, the sea monster, or Yam. You can say Yam as well. So we see here that who did this? Yeah. Yeah. The, the arm. The arm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did what? Cut, cut Rahab into pieces. Cut Rahab into pieces. When you go back and go Rahab, if you don't remember the earlier videos, you'll see what's going on. All right? Let's go to the next one, 52 and 10. 
Yah has Yah has barred his holy arm. He has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations. Before the eyes. Now wait. The way he did this was through who? We discussed this before. Who was the vessel that he used to show his strength to subdue the nations in the land? Dawid. David. David assisted so Yodhe Wale can be enthroned in that region. Remember, it was, it was sort of like a, I'm not going to say espionage, but it's like El is undercover as the avatar yod -Hey -Wah -Hey, who's sitting on the council and now is being used to execute judgment when there's unrighteousness in that territory. Because El is still sovereign. King Khan, mm -hmm. finish that? No. Uh, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our Elohim. And that's how it works. When we do our part, we big him up. Yeah. All eyes ain't on you, all eyes is on him. Yeah. You just a tool. Are you okay with that? Yeah. That hurts some people's pride sometimes. But I'd rather give him the liability, right? For anything that goes on, so I can be his asset. Y'all get that in, in midnight. Let's go to the next verse. Are you finished? Yeah, finished. Okay, next verse. All right, 59 and 16. Uh -huh. Look at that. Fast. Go ahead, go ahead. He saw that there was no man. There was no man. So now we're going to see something. There was no man. And wondered that there were no one to intercede. Uh oh. Then his own arm brought him salvation. Slow down. So the Most High is like, listen, I gave man an opportunity to work this land. I told Israel, this is your promise, but you got to beat everybody up. They couldn't do it. He had to keep sending. Judge after judge after judge, and they had to raise up the kings because they wanted a king, right? right. King Khan. But then he said, at some point, y'all ain't maintaining this. Mm -hmm. Keep going. And his righteousness upheld him. Uh huh. So his own essence yes. had to execute the work in the earth because man is feeble, right. he's flaky, yeah. right? One day he'll love you, next day he won't, yeah. Yeah. right? One day he's here, next day he's gone. So the strength, you got to go to the source. Yes. Yes. If you want to know if that river is going to keep running, you got to check the mountain. Hallelujah. See, people are looking at the river, thinking, oh, man, the river is great, but don't know that's not the source. Yes. That's the byproduct of where it comes from. Hallelujah. You got to check the health of that mountain. Hallelujah. See, people don't think like this, but we, we deep here. Amen. All right, where we at? Let's go. Let's keep going. Let's run. All right. I looked, but there was no one to help. Wait, you looked, and there was no one to do what? Help. Wait, because at this time in Isaiah, what's going on? What's going on in Israel's history at this time? They about to get in captivity. Yeah. David has been gone at this point. Right. Disobedience. Disobedience. The kings are just doing whatever they want to do. So now the prophet has to be raised up. I'm not told you this before. This checks and balances. Yeah. Right? So when Moshe established Torah, he gave the law through Moses to be executed through who? The priesthood, right? The Levites. Right. But he said, set up judges and officers in every city, right? You got your judges, you got your officers, and then you got your legislative branch. Right. Oh, that's deep. That's it, Missed that. So he wrote the laws. You got the legislative branch that's here to interpret those laws. The judge, the judge over cases that come up, and the officers to execute that. You think America started this? No. But what happens is when the when, when you have the chief officer, which is the president or the king, and then you have the legislative branch, and then the judges become wicked, who can speak against them? The prophet. Because now everything is out of order. Now the people themselves do trickle down theology because they're going to follow after what the leadership is doing, if they're corrupt, the people become corrupt. And the most I cannot allow that. Because there's still a remnant they're crying out that is righteous. Yeah, yeah. But they're being oppressed. So the only one that can stand face to face with the king and the priests and the judges is the prophet. Amen. Imagine being a prophet going against the entire leadership of your nation. The most I raised you up to go speak against Trump. Hallelujah. Oh, that's deep. <laughs> The death sentence. There you go. That's what they signing up for. You and they have people all the time saying, oh, "I'm a prophet. I'm a prophet." Really? Is your life on the line each and every day you speak that word, or is your pockets being the line when you speak that? Word? I'm gonna leave it alone. I'm gonna leave it alone. Right, I'm preaching now. Let's go. Let's go. Let's keep going. <laughs> I was appalled. He was what? I was appalled. Appalled. But there was no one to uphold. 
So my own arm brought me salvation, mm. and my wrath upheld me. Mm -hmm. So now we got to the point where through wrath, you can see his righteousness. Because if there's no wrath for wrongdoing, then where's the righteousness? Are you feeling me? So wrath is necessary if it is righteous wrath. So whenever you see injustice going on, you should be wrathful. And I'm not saying pick up a gun, go shoot and kill nobody. I'm saying you need to speak out against it. Take a stand. Flat-footed, have a backbone. Yeah. Okay. Here we at. So now he's saying, look, man is doing whatever he wants to do. There's no king. There's no priest. There's the people's going off. So he says, look, I'm going to step in. Because y'all are shaming my name. I gave y'all my character. I gave y'all my mercy, my grace. I gave y'all my light. I even shared a bit of my glory with you. Because Israel said, I'm going to raise you above all the nations. That's only because of who you know, who you connected to. Yes. Not because your resume is speaking. Yes. Keep going. I will recount the steadfast love of Yah. Uh -huh. The praises of Yah. Wait, the steadfast love and the praises of Yah is connected. Keep going. According to all that Yah has granted us. Uh -huh. And the great goodness to the house of Israel uh -huh. that he has granted them according to his compassion. Slow down. So even though Israel can't even save themselves, Yah says, do my love. I'm going to still step in. Because at some point, a parent will love their child, they get out there, go crazy, things happen. But because of that love, at some point they're going to step in Hallelujah. and say, that's still my child. Go ahead. According to the abundance of his steadfast love. Uh -huh. For he said, surely they are my people, uh -huh. children who will not deal falsely. Slow down. Children. Important, keep going. And he became their savior. Uh huh. In all their affliction, he was afflicted. Uh huh. And the angel, of, I'm sorry, and the messenger of his presence saved them. Wait, who saved them? The messenger of his presence. Whoa, wait, wait. I thought only Yah was the savior. What you mean, the messenger? That's what I'm, at. That's what I'm saying. That's the rhetorical question. So, it's saying his who? His me and the messenger of his presence saved them. That's deep. Because remember we talked about yod hey and the messenger of yod hey and all that the same thing? He just said the, sa the Savior is who? The God messenger? Is the Savior, but the angel present saved them. Yep. Okay. What verse you on? Um, that's nine. Nine? Oh, okay. Keep going. In his love and in his pity, he redeemed them. Uh -huh. He lifted them up and carried them all the days of old. Love and pity. Keep going. But they rebelled and grieved his set-apart spirit. Uh -huh. Therefore he turned to be their enemy uh -huh. and himself fought against them. Uh -huh. Then he remembered the days of old uh -huh. of Moshe and his people. Uh -huh. Where is he who brought them up out of the sea with the shepherds of his flock? He. You're talking about the messenger. Keep going. Where is he who put in the midst of them his set-apart spirit? Uh-oh. Who caused his glorious arm to go at the right hand of Moshe. Wait, his arm to go at the right hand of who? Moshe. Uh-huh. Who divided the waters before them. Uh-huh. To make for himself an everlasting name. The messenger's doing this. Okay. Sankofa. Remember I went into Sankofa? Mm -hmm. Looking back so you know to retrace your steps and know how to go forward. A lot of times we're walking forward. We're getting off track. And unless you look back, you don't know which way you're going forward. So, Psalm 44, 1 and 3, real quick. We're going we're gonna to sum this up and we're going to jet forward. Oh God, we have heard with our ears. Our fathers have told us what deeds you performed in their days, in the days of old. You with your own hand. Wait, you with what? Your own hand. Keep going. Drove out the nations, but them you planted. You afflicted the people, but them you set free. Uh huh. For not by their own sword did they win the land. Nor did their own arm save them. Uh huh. But your right hand. Wait, your what? Your right hand uh -huh. and your arm. Mm. And the light of your face. Mm. For you delighted in them. Mm. And what's that? That's verse 3. Yeah. Okay, Psalm 77 10. Then I said, I will appeal to this. Uh huh. To the years of the right hand of the Most High. To the right hand of the Most High. Psalm 89 13. Precursor? You see. You have a mighty arm. Uh, you got a mighty arm. Strong as your hand. As uh, strong as your hand. High your right hand. Uh huh. So your arm, your hand, high your right hand. Keep this in mind. Psalm 981. Oh, 
Keep on. Go ahead. Oh, sing to Yah a uh -huh. new song. Uh huh. For he has done marvelous things. Uh huh. He, his right hand his and his right hand and his holy arm and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. There you go. Deuteronomy four thirty four. Or oh, has any God ever attempted to go? Wait, has any power to do what? Go and take a nation for himself uh. from the midst of an other nation mm. by trials, by signs, by wonders, and by war, mm -hmm. by a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, mm. by great deeds of terror, mm. all of which your your power did for you in Egypt before your eyes. Your Hewafe, your what? Your power did for you where? Before in your Egypt. eyes before in your Egypt. Eyes. Mm -hmm. So we find out a judgment came across to the gods of Egypt or the power of the Elohim of Egypt. And as a result, I told you all about Pharaoh, right? Or the Nasut Biti and how he represented all the pantheon of deities because he was a living one himself. Mm -hmm. Okay? Right. But we keep saying something about a hand and an arm, a hand and an arm, a hand and an arm. Who is who's it attached to? Keep going. You want me to? Oh, yeah. 515. You shall, <clears throat> you shall remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt. Uh -huh. And Yah, your Elohim, brought you out from there with a mighty hand mm. and an outstretched arm. Mm -hmm. Therefore, Yah, your Elohim, commanded you to keep the Sabbath day. Uh-oh. To keep what day? The Sabbath day. Sunday. Sabbath day. Sunday. Sabbath day. Every day is my Sabbath. Sabbath day. Sabbath day. <laughs> 719. The great trial that your eyes saw, uh -huh. the signs, the wonders, the mighty hand, and the outstretched arm by which your Wafe, your power, brought you out. So will your Wafe, your, your power, do to all the peoples of whom you are afraid. Mm. See? We keep saying the hand and the arm, the hand and the arm. And then the messenger. Yeah. And the messenger took credit in the book of Judges and said, I did this. But wait, I thought it was your hand wife. So how the Metrics are gonna take credit for it unless they want what's going on here? So we summon it up. 11-2. And consider today, consider the discipline of Yah, your Elohim, his greatness, his mighty hand, and his outstretched arm. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the last one, 26 and 8. And Yah brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, with great deeds of terror, with signs and wonders. I think that kind of speaks for itself. The arm and the hand of yod heh wah Elohim, and this has been a theme throughout the pre-exilic period. So we see it in Deuteronomy, we see it in Psalms, we see it in Isaiah. Okay. Let's go to Isaiah 40, 13. Isaiah reveals the identity of the spirit of yod heh wah as a he. What? Come on, we got to stay there. I gotta pull it up. You ready? Oh yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> Who has measured the spirit of Yah, or what man shows him his counsel? Who has what? Say that Who one has one measured no, the no, no, spirit? No, go back. Say it from the beginning. Go back. Who has measured? No, no, from the beginning of the verse. Yeah, that's the beginning. That is. Oh, okay. Keep going. Don't mind me. Who has measured the spirit of Yah? Wait. So here it is. Who has measured or directed? The spirit of yod heh wah -Fain. Go ahead. Or what man shows him his counsel? Or what man shows him his counsel? The spirit of yod heh wah -Fain. What man shows him his counsel? So now we got a pronoun attached to this. Spirit thing. That's deep. Because I know that word spirit there, ruach, I know that that's feminine. Yeah. yeah. It's interesting. So now we're seeing something. So the spirit can be manifested as a he. It's considered as a he a pronoun. We see that also in the book of Acts, where Peter is talking about, you know, who was that? A nice? If I'm not mistaken, he kept the part from giving. Mm -hmm. And then he said that you ain't lying to man, you lied to the spirit. And then he said he. They they add the he in reference to the spirit as a pronoun. Okay, we move moving. Yem Yahu reveals that Yohewan has taken the power from Baal. So now we see the spirit of Yohewan as a him, and this is going to make sense as we, as we jump forward. But Yem Yahu reveals that Yohewan has taken the power from Baal. Jeremiah 14 22. 
and there any among are there any among the false Elohims of the nations? Any among the false Elohim of the nations that can bring rain? That can bring rain. Or can the heavens give showers? Uh huh. Are you not He, O Yah, our Elohim? Uh huh. We set our hope on you, for you do all these things. Wait, but I was the storm maker, right? He was the one that brought the rain. But now the prophet is saying, no, no, no. Which one of your powers can do this thing? But I don't got the power no more. And even at, at least at, during this time with Jeremiah, he has no power. King Khan? Khan. Okay, I just want to let you see this. Okay, we're moving. Isaiah reveals that Yoni Wabe will fight Yom again in the future in order to restore Israel. That's deep. Isaiah 27 and 1. In that day, uh -huh. Yom with his heart and great and strong sword will punish Leviathan. Wait, will punish Leviathan? Uh huh. The fleeing serpent, mm -hmm. Leviathan, the twisting serpent, uh huh. And he will slay the dragon that is in the sea. In that day. So, in a future state, mm -hmm. something is going to go on where some judgment is going to be rendered against Leviathan, who represents the power of Yom in the sea. Okay. That was verse one. Go to verse six. In days to come, Jacob shall take root. Israel shall blossom and put forth shoots. In days and to come. Keep going. And fill the whole world with fruit. The next verse, 7 and 9. Has he struck them as he struck those who struck them? Uh-uh-uh. Wait, say that again. Has he struck them? Has he struck them? As he struck those? As he struck those? Who struck them? Who struck them. So talking about Jacob, right? Israel. He's going to strike those who have struck Jacob. Because if you strike Jacob, then he's going to strike you. Because anybody that you curse from the seed of Abraham, then the Most High has to run the judgment against you. Mm -hmm. This is what this book is talking about against the judgment of the nations. Keep going. Or have they been slain as their slayers were slain? Uh huh. Measure by measure, uh -huh. by exile, you contended with them. Mm -hmm. He removed them from his fierce breath mm -hmm. in the day of the east wind. Mm -hmm. Now, go to 12 and 13. It wasn't finished? No. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Thank you for that. Therefore, by this, the guilt of Jacob will be atoned for, and this will be the full fruit of the removal of his sin. Uh -huh. When he makes all the stones of the altars like chalk stones crushed to pieces, mm. no ashram or incense altars will remain standing. Okay. Mm -hmm. What's that? That was the end of nine. Okay, go to 12 and 13. In that day, from the river Euphrates. In that day, listen. In that day, in that day, in that day. Keep going. From the river Euphrates to the brook of Egypt. Uh huh. Yah will thresh out the grain, and you will be gleaned one by one, O people of Israel. Uh huh. And in that day, uh -huh. a great trumpet will be blown. Uh huh. And those who were lost in the land of Assyria, uh -huh. and those who were driven out to the land of Egypt, uh -huh. will come and worship Yah on the holy mountain at Jerusalem. Now you gotta worship him on a holy mountain. In that day, when he reestablishes himself. Because now at this time, they're about to get kicked and booted out the land. So Yohei Wabe is going to follow his people. He's going to leave the land. He's going to succeed it to whoever's going to be on there temporarily when the nations are treading it down. But he's coming back. Because now what happens is when he leaves out, the nations have an opportunity to enact righteousness in the land and keep it legally. For some kind of heavenly protocol. Mm. But unfortunately, they're going to violate it. Mm. I mean, you can look right now in that land. Oh, yeah. You think they keep all the statute of all the commandments? No. Anybody been to Tel Aviv here? Oh, man. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so what I'm simply trying to explain to you is that Isaiah said in the future, Leviathan is going to rise up. Yom is going to rise up. He's going to strike Yah, and once Yah is defeated, then he's going to restore Israel. He's going to gather them from Assyria, it says, right, in Egypt, from the brook of where? Euphrates, it says, to Egypt, right, the Nile, and he's going to restore them back. This has not happened yet. The prophets reveal that after Israel's exile, and he concedes his throne, Yonihuahe, he will return with an earthly representative to reclaim it. And this is because he raised up a king in Israel. 
based on the suggestion of the people. So now the people wanted it to be like the nations, but Yah used what he allowed to happen to enact his righteousness. So even though Yah said, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to get the salvation and all of that, he is still using an earthly representative. That's deep. Okay. Isaiah 2, 1 to 5. The word, the word that Isaiah, the son of Amos, said concerning Judah and Jerusalem, hmm? it shall come to pass in the latter days that the mountain of the house of Yah shall be established as the highest of the mountains. Slow down. It's going to the Gentiles. Shall be established as no, the no, no, highest. No, no, no. Read, read that in the beginning. Oh, okay. The word is going to the Gentiles. It shall come to pass in the latter days that the mountain of the house of Yah shall be established as the highest Wait, of the mountains. Wait, didn't she say Judah? Go, go back. You said the Judah. word that oh, okay. There you the go. word that Isaiah the son of Amos said concerning Judah and Jerusalem. No, Gentiles. I said Judah and Jerusalem. You sure that don't say Gentiles? It says Judah and Jerusalem. So the word's going to Judah. Yes. Okay, and Jerusalem, and, the city. Yep. And now look, listen to this. The house of who? Keep keep reading. House of Yah. House of Yah. It says Yah there. Mm -hmm. Okay. The house of Yah is where we went over this. Mount Zion mm -hmm. at the tip of the mount because that's where. The power is convened. Yeah. Now remember, I was telling you about the divine council and everything like that. Okay. Psalm 82 and 1, you have the great council. You have El presiding with the other divine council members. And then once that's done, those divine council members separate and have their own little council. And that's all throughout the text. We touched on so many things when we dealt with that. And if you go back to look at where I was telling you about how Elohim and talked about the mountain that Moses went to, Sinai, it says, Ha Elohim, and then Moses, like he was contracted to work for them. That's deep. But you have general council, and then you have small assemblies. Anybody that knows about law, you know about this. Your general assembly and your minor assemblies. So the general assembly is Elohim, the major players in regards to divine council, and then your smaller ones, your breakout groups or breakout committees that get together where you have a divine council member and then they have their host. Mm -hmm. Okay. 11, 1 to 5. Oh no. Still, still reading that? Yeah. Keep going. All right. <clears throat> and a mountain in the house of, of Yah shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be lifted up above the hills and all the nations shall flow to it. Mm -hmm. And many people shall come and say, come, let us go up to the mountain of Yah to the house of Elohim of Wait, Jacob. Wait, where is his house? On the mountain. I didn't write that. That's what it says, right? Mm -hmm. This is where these deities reside at. According to ancient and eastern culture. They believe that the deities reside at the highest peak of the mountain. And if you was able to scale to the top of the mountain. And you were called. Then you can actually see certain things. Keep going. That he may teach us his ways. Uh -huh. And that we may walk in his path. Mm. For out of Zion shall go forth the law. Uh -huh. And the word of God from Jerusalem. Wait, so out of Zion shall go forth what? The law. The law is done. What are you talking about? Nope, the law. Wait, hold on. This is the end times. What are you talking about the law? <laughs> so the people want to go to the mountain to inquire the most high. And the law going to come out from there? Yep. Man, listen. That's not what I was taught, bro. <laughs> I thought the law was done away with. All right, what verse you at? Um, coming up on four. Okay, keep going. He shall judge between the nations and shall decide disputes for many peoples, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares mm. and their spears into pruning hooks. Mm. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. Mm. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of Yah. Okay. Has this happened? No. Has this the war going on? Yeah. So this ain't happened yet. No. That means the law's coming back. I didn't write that. Did I write that? I didn't write that. And I'm not a reincarnation of Isaiah. <laughs> so I definitely didn't write that. 11, 1 to 5. There shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse. Uh huh, y'all know this one. Uh -huh. And a branch from his roots Wait. shall bear fruit. Keep going. And the spirit of Yah shall rest upon uh -huh. him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of counsel and might. The spirit of knowledge and the fear of Yah. Mm -hmm. And his delight shall be in the fear of Yah. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide, disputes by what his ears hear. Mm -hmm. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor mm -hmm. and decide with equity for the meat of the earth. And he shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. Uh oh, wait. Strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. Again, this is an earthly representative. 
That's interesting because before Yah had the messenger do some work, and then he'll raise up a prophet, yeah. now something else is different going on here. Right? Keep going. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, uh -huh. and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Uh -huh. Righteousness shall be the belt of his waist, uh -huh. and faithfulness the belt of his loins. Mm -hmm. The wolf shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the young goat. Is that happening now? No. no. Keep going. And the calf and the lion and the fattened calf together, mm -hmm. and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze. Mm -hmm. Their young shall lie down together. Mm. And the lion shall eat straw like the ox. Wait, i never seen a lion do that. <laughs> so when people tell you this stuff has been fulfilled, because you know, some people tell you that. Yep. All this stuff has been fulfilled already. I said, what? Show me that. Go get me a lion right now. <laughs> Show me the lion doing that. I ain't see that. Keep going. Where you at? What verse you at? Where you at? You at? All right, let's go to uh, 6318. Your holy people held possession for a little while. Wait, listen to this. Your set apart people held possession for a little while. Our adversaries have trampled down your sanctuary. Wow. Okay. Zechariah 8 3. Thus saith Yah. Uh huh. I have returned to Zion. I re wait. I have returned to Zion. And will dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. Uh huh. And Jerusalem shall be called the faithful city. Mm -hmm. And the mountain of Yah of hosts. Mm -hmm. The holy mountain. Mm -hmm. So he's talking about his return to Zion. So remember, during this time period with Zechariah, the Israelites are returning back to the land, right? right? To rebuild the city, the walls, the temple, right? right? After being in Babylonian captivity for about 70 years, right? Okay. So let's go to Jeremiah 23, 5 to 6. Behold, the days are coming, declared Yah, uh -huh. when I will raise up from, I'm sorry, when I will raise up for David uh -huh. a righteous branch. Wait, I'm going to raise up David the righteous branch. For David. Wait, for David? We're going to do something for David. That means it's not David. Mm -hmm. But the text also says that David is going to be a ruler. Now I'm not here to talk about all that. So I want to tell you all that David is actually going to be a prince. And somebody else is going to, okay, that's another lesson. It's deep. It's going to be different offices, different roles, different things going on in that time period. All right. There you go. Wait, hold on. Don't say that. Christians don't like that word. All right. <laughs> okay, keep going. And he shall reign as king and deal wisely. He shall reign as king. Keep going. And shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. Mm. In his days. Judah will be saved, mm -hmm. and Israel will dwell securely. Mm -hmm. And this is the name by which he will be called. Uh-oh, what is it? Yah is our righteousness. Yah is our righteousness. It's deep. That's it. 2618. Michael of Moreshet prophesied in the days of Hezekiah, king of Judah, and said to all the people of Judah, Thus saith Yah of hosts, Zion shall be plowed as a field. Jerusalem shall become a heap of ruins, mm -hmm. and the mountains of the house of wooded height. Okay, where, where are you at? 26, okay, go to 31, 23. Thus said Yah of hosts. So what I'm showing you is, he's talking about a future tense where Israel's going to be plowed, right? Mm -hmm. And then we're going to replant it. So he's allowing everything to happen now. This is the plowing season. Mm -hmm. And then he's going to plant something in there for X amount of time and then get busy. All right, where we at? 23. Mm -hmm. We have 31, 23. Read that. Thus said Yah of hosts, uh -huh. the Elohim of Israel. The power of Israel. Uh -huh. Once more, they shall use these words in the land of Judah uh -huh. in its cities when I restore their fortunes. When I restore their fortunes. Uh -huh. Yah bless you, O habitations of righteousness. Uh -huh. O holy hill. Uh, wait, O what? Holy hill. Because he's coming back for his throne. They're going to be like, what do you mean he's coming back? Not El, yo hey wife. I'm like, what you mean not El, not yo hey wife? We went over all of this already. And I showed you the references. Last one, Micah 4 1. It shall come to pass. It shall come to pass. In the latter days. In the latter days. That the mountain of the house of Yah. Wait, that the mountain of the house of Yah. Remember I told you that messenger that came with them said, all right, cool. I got y'all out of Egypt. I had each other go and work this land so I can go sit on this throne. And they didn't do it. He got mad at them in Judges chapter 2. Got mad at them. This is deep. And then when he was talking to David, he said, yo, you living in a palace. I, ain't, I don't even have a house since I came out of Egypt. Wait, how the messenger's going to tell David that he ain't got a house since he came out of Egypt? That's deep. 
And then that's why we're talking about the set apart hill and the house of L and they, you built things on top of the house. So that way, when you, when you went in this region, now this property becomes property of Israel, which by proxy becomes property of Yohei Wafe. And now he kicks whoever's on the throne off. He sits there, but he can only stay there as long as Israel's righteous. When Israel is righteous, then he has to succeed the throne temporarily. Allow it to be trotted down and then give the other nations an opportunity like he did before. Israel went in there to see if they're going to do the right thing. Because if they don't, then the inevitable is going to happen, which means he's coming back to take over the land. And then he's going to judge the nations. It's going to be deeper than what happened with David. That's Michael 4 1, right? You finished? Okay, keep going. The mountain of the house of Yah shall be established at the highest of the mountains. Shall be established. That means it's going to happen again in the future. But you need this representative that's going to help out. Right. Keep going. And it shall be lifted up above the hills. Uh -huh. And the people shall flow to it. Awesome. Let's move. Ezekiel reveals another theophany. What's a theophany? What is a theophany? Excellent. Say that one more time. And you shouldn't be answered that, Minister Cohen. <laughs> but he said an appearance of what? Say it one more time. The appearance of Yah in a man's form. So the appearance of Yah, Theos, or a power of God, and the form of a man. So Ezekiel reveals, a, this is, watch this, this is deep. Reveals another theophany of Yod and Wafe as a man and spirit being one and the same. The hand imagery. Now, when we say Yohei Wafe manifesting as a man. We've seen that before, right? Yeah. We went to Manoah and Judges. Remember, they saw this man. He, was, he said, what's your name? My name is too wonderful. Right. Then they said, all right, we're going to make the sacrifice to the one who worked wonders. This, so he can manifest as a man. We saw in Abraham's time, there was three messages came, and it said, Yohei Wafe appeared to him. That's another theophany, right? So he appearing as a man. But then we see other parts in the text where it talks about the spirit coming upon David. And one time the spirit was on Saul before it went on to David, right? Then the spirit also lifted up Gideon and a couple other people to do certain things. So the spirit is coming on people, getting on people, coming on people, getting And then it turns into a man. And it does stuff here, then it, 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 it pulls itself away. Then it comes on somebody, it uses somebody to do something, gets off of somebody, gets on somebody else, use you to do something. Get the imagery in your head. We're going to see what Ezekiel reveals. Ezekiel uh, chapter 8, verse 1 to 3. In the sixth year, in the sixth month, on the fifth day of the month, uh -huh. as I sat in my house with the elders of Judah. Wait, so he was chilling with the elders. You see that? But you got prophets out here that despise the elders. Yeah. How you a young prophet? You ain't sitting in the house with the elders soaking up that knowledge. How that work? They ain't reading his text. Keep going. With the elders of Judah sitting before me, the hand of Yah Elohim Wait, fell upon me there. The hand fell on me. <laughs> this is big. Keep going. Then I looked, and behold, a form that had the appearance of a man. Wait, the form that had the appearance of a man. So the hand went on him, then he looked, then the form that did what? Had an appearance of a man. Keep going. Below what appeared to be his waist was fire, uh -huh. and above his waist was something like the appearance of brightness, wow. like gleaming metal. Uh -huh. he, put out, uh, he put out the form of a hand. And took me by a lock of my head. So he put out the form of a hand. There's a lot going on here. We see a spirit. We see a man. We see a hand. Wait. Spirit? Keep going. And took me by a lock of my head. Uh-huh. And the spirit lifted me up. So now. So now the man manifested. He saw a little bit of him, right? A hand came out, grabbed him by his head. And the spirit took him. Wait. Hold on. I thought the man grabbed him. So the man and the spirit is one and the same? Yeah. 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 Wow, this is deep. It's a lot going on there. Spirit, the man. I'm going to show y'all. This is deep. Keep going. And the spirit lifted me up between earth and heaven mm. and brought me in visions of Elohim to Jerusalem mm -hmm. to the entrance of the gate of the inner courts that faced north where was the seat of the image of jealousy uh -huh. which revoked to jealousy. Where was you at? That was in the three. Three, and three. Okay, excellent. So what I want y'all to see is that the spirit and the manifestation of Yohei Wafe is one and the same. Yeah. Remember I told you, you got the hand, this is the arm right here connected to L. This is the arm and the hand that's, that's labeled Y-H-W-H or Yohei Wafe because this is the thing that's doing everything. The council members, they don't know 
that L is doing this work as Yohei Wafe, because they think Yohei Wafe is one of the council members, as we saw in Ugarit, this is what they thought, that Yohei Wafe was the son of L. So L's like, all right, I'm going to work this thing, but I'm going to do it through the raw, through the rules I already set up. It's deep. So he put the arm and the hand underneath the table. They can't see what L is doing. L is using his hand to work and do several things. But what he said is that, look, y'all can have the nations, but I want the people. And nobody in divine council said anything about, why you just want the people? You should want the land. He said, no, I just want the people. Because wherever the people go, I'm going to go. See, if you tie yourself to just the land, then that's the end of your diplomatic immunity. Like, you just tied there. But if you, if you like, one of those vagrant diplomats where you can set up shop anywhere you go, it's deep. Because he knew they was going to be scattered. It's deep. But I want to show you this. This is this is important because I'm gonna show you right now. This is this. We're gonna get through this real quick. I know it's a lot. I'm not gonna read all. Somebody read that title. Don't get scared. I'm gonna I'm gonna break it down for you. Does y'all have a consort? It says, Does your name why they have a consort? Now, why would this be important? I'm showing you this for a reason. This is deep. Proverbs eight and twenty two. I put it up here, so I'm reading. Your name why they acquired me. And if you read Proverbs 8, you know something about what? Who's the subject? Hokmah. Wisdom. And if you look at the word Hokmah, is that feminine or masculine? As a feminine suffix, right? Acquired me. What? At the beginning of his work, the first of his acts of old. Ages ago, I was set up at first. Before the beginning of the earth. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no springs abounding with water, before the mountains had been shaped, before the hills, I was brought forth. Before he even made the earth with his fields, yeah. or the first of the dust of the world, when he established the heavens, I was there. When he drew a circle on the face of the deep, when he made firm the skies above, when he established the fountains of the deep, when he assigned to the sea its limits, so that the waters might not transgress his command, when he marked out the foundation of the earth, then I was beside him like a master workman. Slow down. This is deep. This is in the Bible. I didn't write this. You got to deal with this. What is this? What was going on here? And I was his delight. Man, I did a lesson back in 2016, December. Kind of touched on this a little bit. But I want to show you why it's important. Rejoicing before him always. Rejoicing in his inhabited world and delighting in the children of man. Now watch this. Ruth 4.10. Moreover, Ruth the Moabitess, the widow of Mahlon, I have acquired as my wife. When you go into the Hebrew, you understand the culture. When you say acquired, that is a process. And in this case, it's the kid and redeemer, but also it can be done through what? The dowry. The acquisition or securitizing a woman to take on as your wife because you're taking her from out of the father's household. You must pay some collateral for taking away somebody that's working in this home. So that way you can be the better caretaker of this person and use this person so y'all can build a team together. Yep. But this word acquired, you'll see it is attached to wife. It's a process. That same word is used here. Yohei Wabe acquired me at the beginning of his work. So are we saying that Yohei Wabe has a literal wife? We're not saying that. But there is some kind of counterpart. Yeah. It could be an extension. It could be some essence. Yeah. We don't know. I wasn't there. I can't tell you what it is. But what I will tell you is this. From my research, redactors, and this, this I, you know, scholars that say this, redactors have removed Hokmah and said at one point it was probably Asherah mm -hmm. that was there. Because the reason why they say this is because they wanted to show that there was always a feminine element of Yah right. and it's wisdom. Right. right? So wisdom is the cultivating part. Right? So Yah is the protector and he does all of these things, but through the spirit, the feminine element, this cultivation. This is why he ain't destroy Israel. Because of the feminine motherly instinct kicked in. That element, whatever that is, said, look, I know my child's acting up. You know, dad's going to beat the break of that child. Mother, that coming and said, wait, hold on. I think that's enough. 
<laughs> That's enough. He understands. Yes. Spare. So the reason why I'm saying this is because I want to show you that it was believed by the priests of Israelites that Yohei was out because Baal's consort was a knot, which is supposed to be his half-sister. But El's consort was Asherah. And Asherah was not known to be the consort of anybody else. So now we have a situation where the Israelites are coming into the land, doing their thing. David is revealing all this information. Saying, yo, yo, hey, Wape is hell. We went over that. So the people in their mind, they said, okay, if yo, hey, Wape is hell, then his feminine counterpart, the one that's like beside him, that's the master workman, the one he acquired to be right there with him. Wisdom, you right here. Stay with me, Wisdom, because if you're not here, I'm going to go and I'm going to destroy these people. Right. Wisdom is saying, no, don't do it, don't do it. And then Wisdom is telling man, cry out to me so you can submit to Yah. It's deep. It's deep. Sometimes child go do something wrong, come home, know the dad going to whoop that behind. You go cry to mom. Mom, listen, I didn't mean to do that. Please talk to dad. <laughs> so mother said, okay, I got you. So as the dad is disciplining, your mom is right there to make sure he doesn't go overboard. Hallelujah. It's a lesson in that. It's a lesson in that. But the reason why I'm showing you this is because of this. And I'm not going to read all of this. But they have found a four-tier cult stand found at Tanakh. It's thought to represent Yahweh and Asherah, with each deity being depicted on alternate tiers. Note that on tier two, which is dedicated to Asherah, is the image of the living tree, often thought to be how the Asherim as a cult symbol was expressed. And you'll see that term Asherim in the text, because it was believed to be some kind of grove from a plant. And then they were erected in, I would say, honor of Asherah. So that feminine element was always there, in ancient priests of Israelite thought, the problem is the people started to worship it. That's when it becomes wrong. You don't worship wisdom. Wisdom is not the source. You don't worship the spirit. The spirit is not the source. You worship the source. And you acknowledge the extensions of that source. It don't have to be spooky when you understand the culture. So I'm going to move forward. Now, I say this because, again, this gives you more and more evidence that Yohei Wafe is really El. And the Israelites had this understanding, and the other nations did not. Amen. So here we have a very own scripture from Kerbet El Kum. And if you look here in this description, you'll see a little hand here. And there's some Paleo Hebrew scripts right here. And it says, uh, Uriyahu, the rich wrote it. Blessed be Uriyahu by Yohei Wafe. For from his enemies, by his Yohei Asherah, he saved him carving of hand. Now, what does that mean? That means through the wisdom of Yohei which is his counterpart, that he is able to bring salvation to man. When you are distanced or disconnected from wisdom, you cannot get salvation. Because if you get it, you'll squander it and you won't know what to do with it. Wisdom is the right application of the knowledge and understanding that you acquire. Yes. So the again. right application that yields the expected results. Say it again. It's a yeah. scientific equation. Say it again. Say it again. Knowledge is the retention and regurgitation of acquired information. Yes. Understanding is when you're able to interpret that information and express it to others. Wisdom is when you rightly apply that information, that knowledge and understanding, so you can yield the intended or expected results that are favorable to the one that is carrying it out. Yes. So you can have knowledge, you can have understanding, but if you don't have wisdom, it doesn't matter. You can preach people and tell people how to do whatever they want to do, but you can't execute it because you don't have wisdom. And that comes with humility. Yes. So I'm showing you something that is an archaeological find that pretty much exemplifies a point that I'm trying to make, that Yohei Wafe is El Israel understood this because it was David who helped to reveal this information to the nations at that time. But the nations didn't yield to it. Israel spewed out of the land for allowing the Canaanite nations to entice them away from their covenant with Yohei Wafe. Yohei Wafe is dethroned, however, because he claimed the people he will always be enthroned in the praises of them yes. 
I told him to return with majesty to a Ben's Israel. Now, there's a lot of scriptures here. I'm not going to read it. I'm just going to say them because I want to move forward. Leviticus 18, 28. Leviticus 20, 22. 2 Kings 17, 7 to 20. Uh, 2 Kings 24, 20. Deuteronomy 4, 29 to 31. Deuteronomy 30, 1 to 3. And Psalm 22 and 3 was talking about that he inhabits the praises of his people. Right? And this stuff right here tells you about them getting kicked out. But because of his covenant, he's going to return. But he's given the other nations an opportunity to do what they claim he couldn't do in the land. Which is run it righteously. And every time it goes into the hands of the divine council and other nations, they destroy it. That's why now when Yahweh was telling the Israelites that if you keep my statute laws and commandments, I'll give you the rains in its season. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, when you look at Israel today, the rains are inconsistent yes, are. with the seasons. Mm -hmm. yes. All right, let's move yes. forward. That's deep. Yes. Somebody's going to get that. Yes. What does that mean? That means the nations ain't doing what they're supposed to do in that land. Mm -hmm. So everything is off. Yes. And because of industrialization, it makes things worse, pollution and all that other yes. stuff. El is the power of Israel, patriarchal patron, revealed through the works of his avatar, Yohei which we got from the Mosaic to the monarchy period. And we're going to read these two verses, and we're done with this. And then we're going to get to the last part, about 20, 25 minutes, last part. Let me see, I'm doing on time. I think I'm doing good on time. Doing good on time! <laughs> <laughs> All right, Genesis 33 and 20. All right, Genesis 33 and 20. Mm -hmm. There he erected an altar and called it El Elihi, El Elihi Israel. Oh, okay, so somebody get a lexicon and look that up. That phrase, El Elohe Israel. So it's being revealed that El Elohe Israel, that they're all one and the same. Amen. Right, so it was El that's really the power of Israel or Jacob and Abraham, but L would be like the name, like a personal name, and then you have the epithet Shaddai, which means what? The one that deals violently with? Yep. To drag? What does it say? Um, the mighty Elohim of Israel. The mighty El of Yisrael. So with L, L is the mighty one of Israel. So Shaddai is just an epithet that he took on because he's saying, I'm going to destroy these inhabitants and in his land because they're dealing with it unrighteously. Remember the Amorites? And we said that Amorites, Baal, was their chief deity. We went over that. And they con they convinced the Ugaritic scribes when they took over that area in the Mughal kingdom to write about Baal and how great he is and how he beat up Yom, which was their deity. So he's always been the power of Israel. But he's been revealed through the works of his avatar or the manifestation of El's power is yod heh wav -He. And we see that through the mosaic to the monarchy period where that's revealed. Psalm 95 and 3. For Yah is a great God. Great Yah God. is a great what? Power. Look that word up. Let me know what that says here. Yah is a great power. Uh huh. And a great king above all power. <coughs> so look that up. Somebody look that up for me. What does it say there? And what y'all can do, um, those of you who want to follow. Which, wait, hold on, which one? For 95 and 3, right? Yeah. Yeah, it says Yahuwah, Gadol, El, Gadol. It says El? El. Yeah. El, right? Yeah. Not Elohim. It says El. It says El. So read that again in English. For Yah is a great El. Is a great El, or the great El. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. And a great king above, above all Elohim. Above all the other powers. So El has always been not only the power of Israel, but through the works of Dawid, he was enthroned through the avatar yod heh But yod heh is really just an essence. And out of that essence is a messenger. So you got a hand that's coming out. And the hand is doing things. Remember, the hand can turn into a man and be a spirit and pick you up by your head. And then the hand can go in and do things with you. And if you ain't acting right, the hand will be. If you, if you read when David talks about in Psalm 51, because remember, the spirit left him. Yes. So I want your spirit back. That's right. But you know, the scripture is told me you can't be filled more than one time. But look, that's some different. I don't know if y'all know what I'm talking about. Yeah. You'll go back and watch that video. Yeah. But anyway, they didn't want me to get into the Old Testament, so I left the Old Testament alone. Even though they still use Psalm 51. I'm, I'm going to leave that alone. 
But the point I'm trying to make is I'm trying to give you the imagery. So L is in the recesses of the north. The divine council is here. He steps out once in a while to convene with them, you know, talk with them, see what's going on. Sometimes some, some entity named Hashishan, he show up too. Like, oh, wait, hold on. Y'all having a party? What's going on? I'm going to get my word in. And then we'll see in Zechariah that he shows up to accuse Israel before the king. Before, in the midst of the council. You just want to accuse Israel. Like, yo, I hate these guys, man. You don't see what they're doing over there? And then you have Joshua, who's the high priest. He's, he's there as the, um, I'm not going to say injured party, but he's there as the, um, uh, the not the victim. He's there as the, um, the defendant. There we go. He could be a victim. But he's there as the defendant. And then now, there's some kind of attorney that's been assigned to Israel. That attorney is actually the messenger. But I'm going to leave that alone. Because then, when, when, the, when the scene is set, actually, let's get that. It's three and one. I'm sorry. You said Zechariah three? Three and one. All right. So I'm thinking about the, um, the, the, the dual office of priest and king. Then he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the messenger of Yah, and Hashatan standing at his right hand to accuse him. <coughs> and Yah said to Hashatan, Yah rebuke you, O Hashatan. Yah, had, Yah who has chosen Jerusalem to rebuke you. Uh -huh. Is not this a brand plucked from the fire? Mm -hmm. Now Joshua was standing before the messenger clothed with... Whoa, 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 hold on. He stood before who? The messenger clothed with filthy so garments. Wait, slow down one second. We got a court scene going. Right? On this side, we got the prosecutor. On this side, we got the defendant. The defendant got an attorney. This prosecutor, he worked for the state. Frank, Frank, my lawyer right there, right? So now we got this, this defendant that supposedly committed some kind of crime, right? We saw it was, it was, he committed crime. That's why he's filthy rags, right? Sins, that represents sins, right? So the prosecutor's like, yo, throw the book at him, judge. But then the judge shows leniency. There's no jury in this court, right? No jury, just go. But the judge shows leniency. But there's a reason why he shows leniency. Because the judge is really not impartial. The judge is actually favoring Israel. Which goes to show that the messenger who's Yod Hey Wild thing, they bring this to the L, they don't know that it's his hand. Okay, they missed that. Y'all missed that. I'm going to say it again. The prosecutor don't realize that the defendant's attorney is actually the judge. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's deep. So you're telling me that the court system is rigged for Israel? Yes, yes and Israel's too spoiled to see that. They ruin it. They take advantage of it. You don't realize the only reason why you're getting away with the things that you're doing is because the judge and your defendant attorney, they work together and they love you. Even though you should get everything you deserve, they are showing favor. I don't know how much discretion the judge is allowed to give in any given year. I don't know. Maybe Frank can tell me that. But he decided to give everything for Israel. Are you worthy of that? Wow, that's deep. He says, and he said to the messenger, you said? Remove his clothes? Yep. Keep going. And, and the messenger said to those who were standing before him, remove the filthy garments from him. Uh -huh. And to him he said, Behold, I have taken your iniquity away from you. I have taken your iniquity away from you. And I will clothe you with pure vestments. Mm -hmm. And I said, Let them put a clean turban on his head. Mm -hmm. So they put a clean turban on his head and clothed him with garments. And the messenger of Yah was standing by. Keep going. Go to the next verse. And the messenger of Yah solemn, uh, solemnly assured Joshua. Uh -huh. Thus said Yah of hosts. Go down here is the condition. If you will walk in my ways, walk and, in my ways, and keep my charge, keep my charge, then you shall rule my house uh -huh. and have charge of my court. Uh -huh. Wait, wait, charge of your what? Courts. Keep going. And I will give you the right of access. Slow down. I'm gonna give you the key on top of that. Uh huh. Among those who are standing here. That means even Hashatan. This power, I'm going to give you access to that. If you keep walking my ways and yeah, keep my charges, yeah. then his access is going to be your access. The only way he can keep you from getting his access by keeping you think that you are separated from the Most High. He has to tell you there's a wedge between you and the Most High. 
But as I says, is my hand too short that it cannot save? See, when you don't know Yah's word, that's the only time that the enemy has power over you. Yep. But when you know the truth, you don't fear the lies. Let's sum this up. Okay, so we can jump forward and finish part four, which is maybe about eight slides or whatever. The question is, we have El Shaddai, Yohei Wafe, El Young. Is it three of a kind or one in the same? Hopefully you'll remember what those idioms mean, but what is the answer to this question? One is we have to get one in the same. It's not three different things. So it's El, who's the chief power, the executive power, used an epithet Shaddai when he covered it with Moshe, I mean, uh, with Abraham, so that he can deal with the Amorite problem in the land. And he had to do this covenant, so now when he goes to appear to Moshe in the land of Midian, he had used the avatar, Yohei to represent him, right? And then Yohei goal is to redeem Israel, place them in the land, and through Israel's obedience and subduing of the land, he can be now raised up to be El Elyon the most high because El was always the most high but what he did was he decided to take a step back and let the divine council members handle that but he saw they wasn't doing their thing and they're going to complain if El steps in so El said look I'm going to use this Yohe Wape thing as a council member and I'm going to follow the same rules that I laid out for them and I'm going to choose a people y'all choosing lands I'm choosing a people and I'm going to work this magic so what happens is, there was a El Elyon we saw, which is Baal in the land before the Israelites came in there. And he reigned supreme. And then now when they got there, the messenger left out and said, look, I ain't got a place to live. David, you in the palace. But your hands are too bloody. So we're going to do through your son. We're going to make a house for me on this holy hill so I can dwell in it. And that's what they did. So he became El Elyon when David subdued all the nations. And now everybody came to learn and worship Yohei Wafe. Through his son David, he had the wisdom, brought all the nations through the light of wisdom to learn about yod Wafe. But then, through his disobedience, the nation split. Israel continued to compete. When they got kicked out, el succeeded the throne over to the other divine council members. But the purpose of that was to allow the land to get plowed, to be replanted for more glorious work in the future. The nations can't see this. Only Israel can. We see this because it's our inheritance. It's not for them. Now, a few of them want to come and join us. Hey, come on, cleave unto us. You can come along with us. But the nations themselves, this is not their storybook. The Most High is not reading this bedtime story today. That's right. Now, y'all understand what I'm saying? But if you are orphan and he takes you in his house, you can be a benefactor of what their bloodline child is getting. But the bloodline child is the one that's the most responsible. They get first dibs. That's how it works. I didn't write the book. So at the end of the day, it is not three different entities because sometimes outside of our community, people make you think that it's one and the same if you know how to take the thread and just seam through the tapestry and pull everything together. It's one cohesive, coherent message, narrative, story, and image. So with that, I got... What time is it? Somebody give me time. 3.44. So I got 16 minutes. Uh, All right. Let's go. Part three is the addendum. What is an addendum? Somebody define that for me real quick. An addition. Right? Something that's added on. All right? Something that gives you additional information outside of what the original text or whatever it is. Right? So I stopped there because I know there's some people that say, yo, I'm, I'm to not own. I don't deal with the New Testament. Cool. I gave y'all some information, but if y'all want to still be objective in your studies, I want to give you some additional insight. And for those of you who subscribe to the Brie Hada Shah, I want to bring everything home because Minister Khan's asked me to do this. I was just going to stop right there, but he asked me to do this. So I want to show you this. Daniel reveals more details about El and the messenger of El Yonhei Wafe. Brie Hada Shah reveals the fusion of the messenger of El Yonhei Wafe and Yeshua. Now. This is probably going to be a bit controversial because it stares in direct opposition of the Trinity Doctrine, which is God the Son, second person of the triune Godhead. Because Christianity teaches that Jesus is a pre-existent entity. 
called God the Son that always existed. This was settled at the Council of Nicaea. That was the biggest issue at the Council of Nicaea. Not putting together books, not making the name Jesus. Those are, that's all controversial stuff that people say. But what actually took place is, what is Yeshua's role? Who is he? It took them several years until they got a council to say, look, and purely this is what we're going to believe in this kingdom. So, once you understand that Yeshua was a man that was powered by the spirit, which was the messenger of Yoni Wafe, that is how he received his divinity. Not that he existed sometime in the past. Nobody in the Old Testament would have known anybody named Jesus Christ. That was never revealed to them. They knew the messenger that brought salvation as the hand and arm, the arm and hand of Yah. They knew that. So now this hand is going to get in some flesh and work some magic. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all laughing. Yeah, what's going on? Did I miss it? <laughs> All right, let's, let's run through it. A holy one is considered an evoking one. A holy one. Now, remember that term, holy one. I mentioned it several times. You see it in the text. What is a holy one? What's a holy one? So, a holy one, a set apart one is an awoken one. What's a woken one? A wakeful one. Let's get that. Daniel chapter 4, verse 10. Let's run through this real quick. You'll say sometimes it'll say watch. Yeah. Daniel chapter 4, verse 10. <clears throat> the visions of my head as I lay in bed were these. Uh -huh. I saw, and behold, a tree in the midst of the earth, uh -huh. and its height was great. That's 410. Mm -hmm. Daniel chapter 4, verse 10. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's go to 13. That's where it's at. Mm -hmm. I saw in the visions of my head as I lay in bed, and behold, a watcher. A watcher. A holy one. A holy one. Slow down. So a holy one is a watcher. So remember, there's a holy one of Israel. Mm -hmm. That's some kind of watcher, some kind of guardian of Israel. The messenger, that was his job. Mm -hmm. He was the holy one of yod heh the holy one of El, the holy one that's assigned to Israel. That messenger that we keep talking about, right? Mm -hmm. Keep going. Came down from heaven. Came down from where? Heaven. Keep going. He proclaimed aloud and said thus, chop down the tree and uh -huh. lock off its branches. All right, go to verse 20. Oh, that was the next that was a key on. Strip off its leaves and scatter its fruit. Mm -hmm. Let the beast flee from under it and the birds from its branch. All right, jump down. 20. Mm -hmm. The tree you saw, which grew and became strong, uh -huh. so that its tops reached to the heaven, uh -huh. and it was visible to the end of the whole earth. All right, go to verse 23. And behold, and because the king saw a watcher, a holy one. He saw a watcher, a holy one. Keep going. Coming down from heaven uh -huh. and saying, chop down the tree uh -huh. and destroy it. But leave the stump of its roots in the earth, bound with a band of iron and bronze in the tender grass of the field, mm -hmm. and let him be wet with the dew of heaven, and let his portion be with the beasts of the field, till seven periods of time pass over him. All right, slow down. Now, I want to give you a little bit of information. Go back and read the entire book of Daniel chapter 4, but what I want to show you is that a watcher is a holy one. Now, I want you to go and look up that word watcher real quick. We're going, to, we're going to run through this. The word watch. And look that up real quick. How you know? Oh, you looking like that. <laughs> Somebody look up watcher real quick. Come on. We're running out of time, family. Somebody look up watcher. It says what? Did you read it? You said it? No. Yeah, keep going. I mean, read it from the lexicon. Oh, I thought you were... <laughs> oh, so you got it from the you got it right in the memory. That's good. So yeah, anybody just pull it up. You can pull it up. Lexicon, you can go to blueletterbible.net or dot com. You can go to um, biblehub.com. You can go Waking. to Bible Gateway. Watchful one, Waking. Waking, watchful, wakeful one, one. A guard. A watcher. Messenger. A messenger. That's awoken. Or that's wakeful. Think about it. So in Israel, there were walls that were set up, right? Mm -hmm. People lived within the city. Mm -hmm. But they always put a watcher always. on the wall. He's so even though the watch. people are asleep, right. he's awoken. And he's looking to see what's going on. The there you go. Because if something happens, he got to blow that shofar. Right. He got to wake up. We need to wake up. And if oh. you got to go get a standing audience fight, you got to get ready to fight. So there is a spirit that does the same thing. Because Israel's being protected. But at times, Israel opens the door when they do the wrong thing. See, you got the wall here, but when you do the wrong thing, you're opening the door. But it's this messenger's job 
as a watchman or a guardian or the one that is standing on the wall at night while you're sleeping. Because we walk around sleeping. We don't understand all the other things going around us, but this, this one has been assigned to watch over Israel. Okay? Go ahead. Now watch this. So that's, I'm showing you that the, the, the watcher or that guardian is a holy one. Keep going. That's what Daniel 7 and 9. And the, there's a coronation ceremony. Because we saw where Yohei Wafe went through a coronation ceremony. Remember that? Yeah. Open up the gates, David said. Let the king in so he can get on his throne. David said that. I didn't write that. But we're going to see a coronation is going to happen, but it's not of Yohei Wafe. Can okay, read it? Dan said it up. Thrones were placed, and the Ancient of Days took his seat. Uh -huh. His clothing was white as snow, uh -huh. and the hair of his head uh -huh. like pure wool. Uh -huh. His throne was fire and flame. Its wheels were burning fire. Okay, go to 13. I saw in the night vision, uh -huh. and behold, with the clouds of heaven. Wait, and behold, with the clouds of heaven, that means divine protection and support. Uh-huh. There came one like a son of man. There came one like a son of man. Wait, not the son of man. A son of man. The is not there in the Aramaic. You have the prefix kaf, which means what? Like or as. But Christianity translators still put the son of man. That's incorrect. Learn the grammar. You got to know some Aramaic too to understand the translations. So one like a son of man, there's no definite article there. Keep going. And he came to the ancient of days. He, uh huh. And was presented before him. Uh huh. And to him was given dominion. Uh huh. And glory. Uh huh. And the kingdom. Wait, and glory. Most I said he don't share his glory. Yeah. What you talking about? Glory. No, 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 no. I read in Isaiah where he said I don't share my glory with no one. Right. But then at the psalmist David said, "What is man but thou art mindful of him?" That he's a little bit below the angels, but you have crowned him with what? Some kind of glory. So there's some glory that's reserved for man, and there's one that is only Yah's. Yah saying the one that's reserved for me ain't nobody gonna get this one. But if I choose you, I'll give you a little bit of the pie. Keep going. And to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom mm -hmm. that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. Uh -huh. His dominion is. Wait, so all peoples, languages, nations shall serve him. him. Okay. And he's an extension of the Most High, right? Of the Ancient of Days. Keep going. His dominion is an everlasting dominion. It's everlasting. Which shall not pass away. Uh huh. And his kingdom, one that shall not be destroyed. Awesome. So we're going to stop there. So now we see a coronation ceremony of some kind of man. This. Son of man, which means he's a mortal. Some kind of mortal is now being brought forth the ancient of days, and now he's being bestowed with all of these things. As a mortal man, he's getting these things. Not the son of man, a son of man, somebody from the sons of men. A mortal. Okay, are you following? Yes, sir. Now look at this. The messenger of your Hewabi appears to Daniel. This is important. Let's read it real quick. Daniel chapter 10, verse 4. On the 24th day of the first month, uh -huh. as I was standing on the bank of the great river, this is Daniel saying this. I lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold, a man clothed in linen with a belt of fine Slow gold. Slow down. A man clothed with linen. Uh -huh. With a belt of fine gold. A belt of fine gold. From you fast uh -huh. around his waist. Uh -huh. His body was like bear. Okay. His face was like the appearance of lightning. Okay. His eyes like flaming torches. Uh -huh. His arms and legs like the gleam of burnished bronze. Woo! Okay, wait, wait. Okay, keep going. And the sound of his words were like the sound of a multitude. Mm. And I, Daniel, alone saw the vision. Now wait, did Jesus exist at this time? Is he here? No. Jesus, you tell me Jesus ain't walking the earth at this time? No. <laughs> Keep going. For the men who were with me uh -huh. did not see the vision. Okay. But a great trembling fell upon them uh -huh. and they fled to hide themselves. Mm -hmm. So I was left alone and saw this great vision uh -huh. and no strength was left in me. Uh -huh. My radiant appearance was fearfully changed okay. and I retained no strength. Uh -huh. Then I heard the sounds of his words and I heard the sounds of his words. I fell on my face in deep sleep with mm -hmm. my face to the ground. Mm -hmm. And behold, a hand touched me and set me trembling on my hands uh -huh. and knees. And he said to me, O Daniel, man greatly loved, understand the words that I speak to you and stand upright, for now I have been sent to you. And when he Wait, had spoken. So he's a messenger. He was sent to Daniel, right? Uh-huh. Keep going. And he had spoken these words to me. 
I stood up trembling. Then he said to me, Fear not, Daniel, uh -huh. for from uh, from from the first day, first day that you were set your heart to understand uh -huh. and humbled yourself before your Elohim, uh -huh. your words have been heard. Wait, so from the day one, yet your, your words have been heard, but it has not been fulfilled. And this is the problem with us. See, Daniel didn't give up. He praised one thing, tried to get an answer. It didn't come immediately, so he persisted. But the first time you pray, the most high hears it. But there's stuff that needs to be worked out first before you get an answer. Yes. This is why we need to learn patience. Yes. Okay, keep going. And I have come because of your words. Uh -huh. The prince of the kingdom of Persia uh -huh. withstood me wait, 21 hold on. days. So wait, he's fighting the prince of the of what? Of Persia for 21 days? So when you pray, you don't know that messenger that's coming to you to do whatever the most high said him to do. Got to fight a whole bunch of principalities before oh, yes. he gets to you. No, this is deep. Yes. He has to fight on your behalf. Yes. Don't make him fight in vain. Yes. Don't pray for something that you're going to fulfill your flesh. Pray for something that when it's accomplished, it's going to glorify the most high. Oh, and then not only will one messenger come, a whole army is going to come. Keep going. Wait. But Michael, one of the chief princes, uh -huh. came to help me. Whoa, so Michael had to come and assist. For I was left there with the kings of Persia. So he had to, he's fighting by himself and Michael had to come and help him. This is deep. Yeah. Because Daniel's looking like this character and it looks like it's an awesome kind of, but he had to get help from Mikhail to fight. Hallelujah. Keep going. And came to make you understand what is to happen uh -huh. to your people in the latter days. What verse you at? I'm finishing up 14. Okay. For the vision is for days yet to come. There you go. All right. So, and time events would require Mikhail to stand up on behalf of Israel because we saw that when that messenger came to Daniel to give him this message, he had to fight some kind of principalities in the heavenly realm. Mikhail had to come and assist them so that way he can get through to speak to Daniel. And then now in the end time, Mikhail is going to stand up on behalf of Israel because a fight's going to happen sometime in the future. Look at that word stand up in Hebrew. Read that real quick. Let's get Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. At that time shall arise Michael, uh -huh. the great prince uh -huh. in charge of your people. Uh -huh. And there shall be a time of trouble. The great prince that what? Has charge of your people. Has charge of your people. Uh -huh. And there shall be a time of trouble. Uh -huh. Such as never has been since there was a nation until that time. Mm -hmm. But that time your people shall be delivered. Ah. Everyone whose name shall be found written in the book. Mm. And many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, some to shame. Slow down. So the New Testament didn't write this. This is before the New Testament came on the scene. The New Testament is only as good as what it reflects from the Old Testament. The so-called Old Testament. Or like Minister Carr says, the original Testament. There's nothing new in there. That's right. But you see it with new eyes if you are a convert to Christianity. And you're looking at the book from the end to the beginning. And you miss all the culture. So Daniel's going to stand up and fight on behalf of Israel in the end times. But we see that in the book of Revelation, right? Remember that? That last battle in the book of Revelation? Mm -hmm. Who's fighting there? It says Mikhail, right? Yes. A great war broke out and Mikhail fought somebody. Mm -hmm. This is what this is talking about. But why are they fighting? They're fighting to set the stage for that messenger to come on the scene and establish everything. The messenger's coming through a person, on a person, in a person to do something. Now, so this is going to happen, right? So we got that, right? All right, let's deal with Yeshua real quick. Let's get through him because this is the end of it. Yeshua received the essence of the spirit after baptism. Did he get it before baptism? No. Nope. You sure he didn't get he get he got it at baptism, right? That's when he became the son. I didn't write that. And was inducted into the heavenly sonship community. Because you know the scripture says Ben El, the sons of El, Ben Elohim, the sons of Elohim. Well, he became a divine council member as a holy one. Now this is deep. Get Matthew chapter 3, verse 13. It, that, that sonship, y'all thinking it's just some earthly thing. Come on. No, come on. No. He was brought onto the panel of the sons of El, and not just as a panel member, but as a
faileth to the judge. Okay. This is why when it says that he's above all principalities and thrones and powers, well, in a court setting, the only other entity that has power next to the judge is who? The bailiff. And the bailiff's job is to do what? In that order. Carry out the judge's Woo! instructions immediately. So you bring in an average person and making him the bailiff to work behalf on the side of the Most High. And the spirit is his uniform, it's his badge, it's his gun. Because there might be other officers in there, but that bailiff? That's right. Are y'all dead? Wait, they gotta go to court. They, they, they gotta go to court. They gotta, they, gotta, <laughs> they gotta see us. All right, read that. Matthew chapter 3. Then Yahushua came from Galilee uh -huh. to the Jordan to Yochanan okay. to be baptized by him. Okay. Yochanan would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you. Hold on. So, John don't understand. Y'all can not understand what's going on. Yeshua is saying, listen, you don't understand. I got to get into this council because I got to do something for Israel. If he, don't, if he don't get baptized and he don't get that ruach, which is that messenger, that hand that's going to use him, and he don't get on that panel, he can't do nothing. This is why he had to fight with John. Like, yo, no, no, no. you need to baptize me. You don't understand, John. Maybe in the future you'll get it before your head gets chopped off. But I'm saying, right now, get this work done. Let's, let's take care of this. And I'm not sliding John. I'm just saying, John don't understand what's going on. Keep going. I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Yahushua answered him, Let it be for now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Woo, fulfill all righteousness, keep going. Then he consented. And when Yahushua was baptized, immediately he went up from the water. Mm -hmm. And behold, the heavens were open to him, mm -hmm. and he saw the spirit of Elohim descending like a dove mm -hmm. and came to rest on him. Uh -huh. And behold, a voice from heaven said, What? This is my beloved son with who I am well pleased. There you go. Now he's inducted into the sonship, the sons. So now he can operate with heavenly powers. You know, when he encounters this 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 man that got these legion on him. Oh, will you come to do with me, the Holy One? Now he's the Holy One. Now, now he's like a council member on the earth. It's deep, man. Yeah. It's, uh, it's deep. It's deep. Birth, <laughs> huh? He didn't say that at, at, at Christ's birth. No, he did not. No, he did not say that. This is the man that will be king of the Jews. That's it. All that other stuff wasn't revealed yet. It took time. Yes, we're recognized as the Holy One of El after baptism. So the baptism process is to make him a Holy One. Y'all missed that. Because now that messenger, who's the Holy One of the Watcher, now can come in his body and use him to do stuff. So now his word can't be his own. It got to be who he's connected to. It's deep. Read that. Matthew chapter 3, verse 13. Oh, we just read it, right? Yeah, we just read it. Oh, we did? Yeah, 313? Yeah. Uh, 17. Oh, John, good John 669. 669. Yeah, I'm John 669 says the same thing. Read it. And when, and when he, excuse me, and when he had believed, uh -huh. and have come to know that you are the Holy One of El. So, this is the disciple saying this. The verse that I'm supposed to get up here in Matthew is, is later on in the book of Matthew. It's when he encounters this legion entity and they said what have you come to do to us the holy one of hell. what do you come to us so now these other entities fringe entities that's working on behalf of somebody identifies him as a holy one this was not done before his baptism the sonship now he's been inducted into the sonship now he can execute power in the earth Mark one this, read that thank you that's it that's it. Read that. Sharp. Let's go. What have you to do with us? What have you to do with us? Yahushua of Nazareth. Yeshua of Nazareth. Have you come to destroy us? Uh-huh. I know who you are. Whoa. The I Holy know who one, you are. The Holy One of hell. Slow down. Not the flesh. The flesh don't got no power. Right. They know the messenger in that flesh. Right. That's who they see. Right. That's who they talking to. Yeah. The flesh was promoted by the spirit. The prologue of Yachin, I got to show you this real quick, because this fuses that. Describing the fusion of the message of your and and Yeshua. Now watch this. This is deep. When people read the prologue of John chapter 1, verse 10 to 18, I went over this before in the past, and Omenis Carnes has as well, you see it with different eyes. Because we're not dealing with a pre-existent Jesus Christ, God, the Son of the Trinity. 
But we see this messenger all throughout the Old Testament that's executing judgment, that's fighting on behalf of Israel, that now reveals himself to Daniel. Daniel's able to see him. Daniel's like, oh, writing down these details of what this messenger looks like. And then Daniel also saw, sees that somebody being presented and given a crown of thorns. So Daniel's seeing all these different things that was already being spoken about in the Old Testament. Wasn't no Jesus Christ. But read that, John chapter 1, verse 10. He was in the world. He was in the world. Wait, it can't be Jesus. So he, some entity was in the world. Uh huh. And the world was made through him. The made was world through him because the spirit can also manifest as a man. Remember we saw that? Yet, okay. Yet the world did not know him. He didn't know him. The world didn't know him. Keep going. He came to his own and his own people. His own because the messenger works on behalf of Israel. And yo hey wife, the name is in the messenger. <laughs> Keep going. And his own people did not receive him. They didn't because he came for their benefit. Keep going. But to all who did receive uh -huh. him, who believed in his uh -huh. name, in his name, he gave the right to become children of Elohim. So now he's also bringing them on. Remember, Yeshua went through the adoption process. <coughs> now the messenger through Yeshua can bring these people on as well. Keep going. Who were born not of blood, mm -hmm. nor of the will of flesh, mm -hmm. nor of the will of man, mm -hmm. but of Elohim. Keep going. And the word became flesh. Wait. And the word, which is the spirit or the messenger entity that was responsible for helping to do everything that El was telling it to do, that was there with him, that, that messenger, that essence, that extension of him was there. Now keep going. Dwelt among us. Uh-huh. And he had seen his glory. Slow down. So that messenger... It came into the world through a person. Not Jesus Christ in some regressive state in the past, coming into his own body. No, the messenger of yod heh wah -Hey, As a spirit came into that body, he came into the world that he came to protect, which was Israel. And they did not recognize the messenger. They always killed the messenger. The messenger go use Isaiah, he get killed. Go use Ezekiel, he get killed. Everybody the messenger used all these other prophets, they killed the prophets. Why do you think Yeshua says that? You man, you kill all your prophets. Keep going. Um, okay. As we've seen his glory as the as glory as the only son. As the only son. From the Father. From the Father. Full of mercy and uh, truth. Okay. What verse is that? Um, that's in the 14. Okay, in the 14. Keep going. Um, Yoganon bore witness about him and cried out. Uh-huh. This is <clears throat> this was he of whom I said. Uh-huh. He who came after me wrenched before me because so, he was before me. So now when the transition happened from the messenger going into the flesh, now they became one. For, for Hold on. So the messenger, which is the word, because you know, the word of the Most High came unto me and said, and that word that will come unto him will be a spirit or a messenger that will bring the word to the prophet. Now that word, which is an extension, remember the hand, it now is going into the flesh. It has nothing to do with Jesus being pre-existent. No, that messenger is the hand going in him. Because yeah. that right hand is the power of the Most High. But it's working in the earth. It hasn't been elevated yet onto the throne in heaven to... Okay, we're going to get there. we got a few more slides. Keep going. For from his fullness we all receive uh, mercy upon mercy. Uh -huh. For the law was given through Moshe. Wait, the law was given through Moshe. Great uh, mercy and truth uh -huh. came through Yahushua. Came through Yahushua. Keep going. No one has ever seen Elohim. Wait, no one has ever seen Elohim. The only Elohim. The only, wait, the text says the only God. Yeah. No one has ever seen God, the only God. Who was at the Father's wait, side? Wait, slow down. Was at the Father. So the messenger, who's a part of the Father, which is his hand and his arm, nobody ain't ever really seen that. You see the works of it, but you don't know it on a personal level like that. So who reveals that? He says he has made him known. He has made him known. Yeah. So that messenger, the only power of Israel, the highest power, made it known through Yeshua. It's deep. Absolutely. Deep. That's it. You done? Yep. That's it. Okay. Let's move forward. Yeshua refers to the imagery of Daniel 7 about himself occurring after his death. I'm connecting the dots. We're almost done. Mark 14, 60, 61. It's only a few verses. Mark 14, 61. Uh-huh. But he remained silent. 
and made no answer. Slow down. This is when he's on trial now before the Pharisees, right? Keep going. Again, the high priest asked him. What? Are you the Christ? Are you the Messiah? The son of the blessed. The son of the blessed. And Yahushua said, I am. I am. And you will see the Son of Man. Wait, and you will see the Son of Man seated, seated at the right hand of God. Wait, Christ. you will see it. I mean, it ain't happened yet. So he's saying you're going to see the Son of Man. Remember Daniel chapter 7? Daniel saw the Son of Man coming to receive all of this stuff. Remember, the thrones were laid out. He got a throne he got, he got to sit on. So Daniel's seeing this. So Yeshua says, yeah, that's me. And you're going to see the Son of Man. The same thing he said. You're going to see the Son of Man do what? Seated at the right hand of power. And coming with the clouds of heaven. That means it didn't happen yet. Mm -hmm. So here's my question. If God the Son, second person in Trinity existed, what throne was he sitting on? Mm -hmm. This is the question. Luke 22, 66. When they, when they came, the assembly of the elders of the people gathered together, uh -huh. both chief priests and scribes, uh -huh. and they led him away to the council. And they said, if you are Mashiach, tell us. But he said to them, if I tell you, you will not believe. Uh -huh. And if I ask you, you will not answer. Okay. But from now on, the Son of Man shall be seated at the right hand of the power of Elohim. Uh -huh. So they saw... Oh. They had the right hand of the power of the Elohim. The right hand power of the judge in the court is who? The baby. There you go. So they all said, are you the Son of Elohim then? Uh -huh. The Son of Elohim, go ahead, because they want to know. And he said to them, you say that I am. Then they said... What further testimony do we need? <laughs> so in one case, he says, yeah, it's me. In the other case, he's like, well, y'all say that's me? Fine, let's so be it. But, but the point is, he says, you're going to see the Son of Man be seated. He has to die first. Right. right? So after completing his earthly assignment, Yeshua was promoted to the right hand of God, or El, or the Father. But after he did, now the scripture's here, but I want to read just one, Mark 16, 19. Yes, because I want to show you that this happened afterwards. He wasn't sitting on the throne before then. It happened after he died. He had to be inducted into the sonship community. And then working on earth, he committed, he completed his mission. He was killed. He was buried. Mind you, that hand, the messenger is still on that flesh, preserving that flesh. The soul went down, according to Peter, did whatever it did came back up into the body after three days and the hand raised the flesh up because the hand is still in them. Typically when you die, your spirit, it says, go up where? If, when you die, your spirit goes where? Back to the creator. But in this case, it stayed there. <laughs> it didn't go nowhere. It stayed right there because he got to come back because he got to sit up on the throne. It's deep. Okay, read. So then, after now, Yahushua after he had spoken to them, mm -hmm. was taken up into heaven uh -huh. and sat down. At Wait, the right hand. after he spoke to him, this is after he died, he chilled with them for 40 days, right? He had to kill time so Shavuot can come in. So the same people that executed him during Passover, unleavened bread, can come back and hear the message from Kephas and Peter. Used the feast days to do this. Keep going. Sat down at the right hand uh -huh. of Elohim. So he sat down at the right hand of him after he completed his mission. Cain Khan? Uh -huh. Okay, I'm, I'm, you don't have to read all this, but I'm going to read it. Acts 2.33, Acts 5.31, Acts 7.55-56, where he's standing up from off the throne to see what's going on with Stephen. Like, oh man, this is the first martyr right here. I got to see this. Yeah, it's real. Romans 8.34, will somebody read that real quick? Romans 8.34. I'm getting it. Mm-hmm. Who is to condemn? Mashiach Yahushua is the one who died. More than that, who was raised. Uh -huh. Who was at the right hand of El. Uh -huh. Who indeed is interceding for us. So who he said was doing that? Uh, Mashiach. Mashiach. Okay, keep going. Okay. Let's go to uh, Colossians 3 and 1. And then we'll go to the next slide. I think there's, how many more slides? Yeah, there's two more slides. Uh-huh. Colossians 3 and 1. Uh -huh. If then you have been raised with Mashiach, uh -huh. seek the things that are above uh -huh. where Mashiach is, mm -hmm. seated at the right hand of El. There you go. He's seated at the right hand of El. If you're at the right hand of El, then you're above every other power that's out there. Right? Okay. 
We got Hebrews 10, 12, Job 2, 1, uh, 1 Peter uh, 3, 22. The point is, he only was seated on throne after. So now remember, he died when he resurrected and he went up. The coronation ceremony took place. He was given all of this stuff. He didn't execute everything yet, but he was given. And then said, all right, now here's your throne. This is why when it says the ancient of days, all the thrones were laid out. There's a throne for him right there. It was empty. They're like, hold on, why is the empty throne sitting right here next to the ancient of days? Council members is looking like, whoa, what's the, why I got an empty throne there? i never seen that throne before. <laughs> and then a man comes, I'm like, whoa, hold on. He get to sit there? What's going on, man? <laughs> Al, you ain't telling us something. I was like, hey, remember that your AYB character you thought was just one of my sons? That's me. I put him in a man, worked my magic, and now he's sitting right next to me. He's going to execute judgment on all y'all unlawful. Remember, Job said, even the heavens ain't pure in his sight. He got to clean out the heavens too. Why do you think it says new heavens and new earth? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeshua has attained the role of high priest after the order of Melchizedek. This is important. All right, and I'm going to run through the rest because I know it's late and I don't want to keep holding on. But Hebrews chapter 6, verse 19 to 20. Please read that real quick. Hebrews 6, uh -huh. 19. What is that saying? We have this as a we have this as a sure and steadfast anchor of the soul. Okay. A hope that enters into the inner place behind uh -huh. the curtain. Mm -hmm. When Yahushua had gone as a forerunner on our behalf, uh -huh. having become a high priest. Having forever. become a high priest. That means it happened at a particular point. It wasn't always that case. The high priest, go ahead. Having become, um, having become a high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. After the order of Melchizedek. The high priest role happened when he entered into the heavenly realm, into the heavenly sanctuary. Now he can intercede on behalf of Israel. So it doesn't matter who in the heavenly realm accuses, accuses Israel. Guess what? The attorney on behalf of Israel is above all the other prosecutors, the defendant attorney. So his discovery is a little bit better. His sessions with the judge is a little bit better. So now he can better intercede for Israel. Okay. Let's do let's do uh, eight eight and one real quick. Now the point in what we were saying is this: uh -huh. we have such a high priest, uh -huh. one who was seated at the right hand of the throne one of the Majesty. Was seated. That means again, it something took place. So the high priest is sitting right next to L. Keep going. Who is seated at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in heaven. Uh-huh. A minister in the holy places. Uh-huh. In the true tent. Uh-huh. Then the master set up, not man. That the master set up, not, not man. man. All right, let's move forward. Now, I'm not going to read all of this. But if you go back into the Dead Sea Scrolls, because I'm trying to show, again, extra biblical evidence to validate the stuff that I'm saying to y'all. So you don't think I'm just making this up. Remember, the name of this is also subtitled the narrative. I'm giving you a narrative based on what the text says and extra biblical references say, whether it's archaeology or other material uh, from other culture. And I'm trying to piece together a narrative so you can get the big picture. If you read 11Q13, the Melchizedek scroll, this has to do with Melchizedek, right? And not really Melchizedek himself, but a representative of the order of Melchizedek. And it says, and the day of atonement... Is the end of the 10th Jubilee when all the sons of light, you know, you heard Paul mention the sons of light. You, you heard that in the scriptures, yeah. Paul says sons of light. He didn't make that up. They're gleaming this from other communities that was already there that believed this and didn't subscribe to Yeshua. This is before Yeshua. This is 100 CE. 100 CE. This is 130 years before Yeshua came on the scene. Watch this. And the men of the lot of Melchizedek will be atoned for. That means everybody who's been inducted into the order of Melchizedek by way of the high priest, which is Yeshua, they will be atoned for. This is why when he says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Well, in order for you to get a ticket for atonement, you have to be inducted into this order. And then the high priest, you know, when Aaron has to put the hands in first, he has to make sure the sins of him and his family and the priest is all done before he can deal with the people. So in order for us to deal with the people, once we inducted into the order, now we can work with the people. But this is your ticket. This is your pass in. It says, and he will, by his strength, who? Melchizedek, judge the holy ones of God. 
executing judgment as it is written concerning him in the Psalms of David, who said, Elohim has taken his place in the divine council in the midst of the powers he holds judgment. And it was concerning him that he said, let the assembly of the peoples return to the height above them. El will judge the people. So now, Melchizedek, this entity, is going to be the representative of El doing all the work that El would normally do himself. So now he's presiding over the divine council. This is according to the Quran community. And it said this concerns all the sons of El. And Elohim, your Elohim is Melchizedek. Your power that's going to execute everything. Remember that messenger was the power of Yodhi Wafe. Now it's been delegated to Melchizedek, who's the high priest that the author of Hebrews says is now seated on the right hand of El. Now he executes all of El's power, authority, and judgment, not only in the heavenly realm, but also in the earth. I'm not just making this up. There's other communities that see the same thing. Are you following me? Okay. The messenger from Daniel reappears to Yachanah as Yeshua. Revelation 1, 1 to 2, 12 to 18. You can go back and read that. We know that this character now is supposed to be Yeshua. Looks like something in the book of Daniel. Of course that would make sense if the messenger fused into him. Of course that would make sense. He would resemble that messenger. You, you follow me? Yes, sir. Revelation chapter 1, 1 to 2, 12 to 18. Right? Last slide. The final war in heaven. Mikael stands up on behalf of Israel and fights divine counsel. People say, well, who's the devil then? Where is he at? Well, he has something to do with divine counsel because in Job chapter 1, 6 to 7, in Job 2, every time the sons of El will come into court and present themselves before El, he there. Because he's one of them. You understand? Get Revelation chapter 12, 7 and 10. Let's bring this up. Revelation 12, mm -hmm. uh, verse 7. Now war arose in heaven. Mikael and his angels or his messengers fighting against the dragon. Uh -huh. And the dragon and his angels fought back. Wait, so the dragon and his angels fought back. Because here, Hashatan, this entity who they're going to assume is Hashatan, he gets access there. Because he's a council member. Of course he's going to get access. But he has to give an account of what he's doing. But he also has his own set of part entities that follow him. A war breaks out, right? Keep going. But he was defeated. Uh huh. And there were no longer any place for them in heaven. Slow down. So now he can't get access anymore. He's been kicked out. So he's restricted to the earthly realm. And when he did, when, when that happens, he knows the end. Keep going. And the great dragon was thrown down. Uh -huh. That ancient serpent uh -huh. who is called the devil and Satan. Uh -huh. The deceiver of the whole world. Uh -huh. He was thrown down to the earth. And his angels were thrown down with him. Mm -hmm. And I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now the salvation and the power Hold of on. the kingdom. Now the salvation and the power of the kingdom. Okay. Of our Elohim. Of our power. And the authority of his Mashiach. Uh-oh. Have come uh -huh. for the accuser of our brothers uh -huh. has been thrown down who accuses them day and night before our power. Now remember when we read in Zechariah, that's what he was doing. And then for some reason he decided he's going to take over. But Mikhail stood up like we read in Daniel chapter 12 and they kicked his behind out. Now he's stuck on the earth doing wickedness and unrighteousness. And now the messenger of Yoni Wafe vindicates El against all the nations of the divine council. New Jerusalem is established for El, Yoni Wafe, to reign again forever, and the heavens are purged. And now I promise you, that's the last slide. Revelation 19, 11 to 16. Correct. I want to show y'all that New Jerusalem, remember they kept saying, Isaiah and Jeremiah kept saying that he's going to come back, he's going to return to his holy hill and reestablish what? Jerusalem, because that's where his throne is at. Okay, read it. Revelation 19, 11. Then I saw heaven open, uh -huh. and behold, a white horse. Uh -huh. The one sitting on it is called Faithful and True. Uh -huh. And in righteousness he judges. Wait, remember it said when that earthly representative come back, his name is going to be called what? Yo hate our righteousness, right? Yeah. Keep going. And in 
And faithful and true, and his righteousness he judges and makes war. Uh -huh. His eyes are like a flame of fire. Uh -huh. And his, on his head are many dying. Uh -huh. And he has a name written that no one knows but himself. Uh -huh. He is clothed with a robe dipped in blood. Uh -huh. And the name by which he is called is the word of, of El. Uh -huh. And the armies of heaven, arrayed in fine linen, mm -hmm. white and pure, were following him on white horses. Uh -huh. From his mouth comes a sharp sword. Slow down. Remember we saw that it said out of the mouth of the one who's being given the yeah. kingdom everything is a rod that's going to smite the nations. Yeah. Keep going. And which to strike down the nations. Uh -huh. And he will rule them with a rod of iron. Uh -huh. He will tread the winepress of the fury of the wrath uh -huh. of the Almighty. Now what's, what verse is that? Oh, uh, that was 15. Verse 16. Uh -huh. On his road and on his thigh he has a name written. King of kings and Lord of lords. Okay, that means he's going to be over all the kingdoms like we saw in Daniel, right? 21, in, uh, 21 1 to 3. Then, then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Uh -huh. For the first heaven and the first earth was passed away. Wait, remember Yeshua said that not one jot tittle the law is going to be done away until what? Yeah, this is when it happens. So did that happen yet? Because I must have missed that. That happened. <laughs> We're in a raw country or something. <laughs> Go ahead. For the first earth that passed away, and the sea was no more. Uh -huh. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down. What's the, what's the, what's the city name? The new, new Jerusalem. Jerusalem. It's going back to Jerusalem. Keep going. Coming down out of heaven uh -huh. from hell, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Keep going. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of El. Wait. The dwelling place of El. Remember they was going to the house of El on the mountain so they can inquire and the law going to come out? Keep going. The dwelling place of El is with men. Uh -huh. He will dwell with them. Uh -huh. And they will be his people. Uh -huh. And El himself will be with them. As they El are. himself El. would be with them. Keep going. El. Will be with them as their El. As their L, uh huh. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, uh huh. And death shall be no more, uh huh. And neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore, uh huh. For the former things have passed away, uh huh. And he who seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. What verse are you at? Verse, what verse, five? verse 5. Verse 5, okay. So finish 5 and jump to 10. And he who seated on I'm making all things new. And also he said, Write this down. For these words are trustworthy and true. Uh huh. Verse 10. Uh huh. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great high mountain. Uh huh. And showed me the holy city. Again, a high mountain. Keep that in mind. Keep going. And showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven. So he's seeing it again. Uh huh. What verse you at? Out of heaven from El. 10 to 12. Having the glory of El. The glory of El, the radiance. Like the most. Rare jewel, uh -huh. like a jasper, mm -hmm. clear as crystal. Mm -hmm. It had a great high wall with twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, messengers, and on the gates the names of the twelve tribes of the, the sons twelve of the gates were enshrined. Twelve messengers, that's by the gates of the twelve tribes of Israel, the Gentile nations. Their names is up there. No, it's not. <laughs> you sure? The tri twelve tribes of Israel. Are you sure? The tribe of the sons of Israel, actually. <laughs> they just go they got they got that no 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 12 gates so how did the gentiles get in whatever israelite you cleaved unto and if yes she was the main israelite you cleaved unto y'all coming through judah that's it there's nowhere else you can't get in the city because this is jerusalem and this and don't let nobody tell you the new jerusalem don't let nobody tell you that all oh, the new testament fulfilled everything in the old testament already when did this happen i must have missed this <laughs> All right, I got left behind. Let me hold it, right? <laughs> go to Isaiah 66. I got it. I'm trying to show you that there's nothing new in the so-called New Testament. Isaiah chapter 66, uh -huh. starting at verse 15. Okay. For behold, y'all will come in fire, uh -huh. and his chariots like the whirlwind, uh -huh. surrender his anger and fury, uh -huh. and his rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire will Yah enter into judgment, uh -huh. and by his sword with all flesh. Correct. And those slain by Yah will be many. Mm. Those who sanctify and purify themselves, going into the gardens, following one in the midst, mm -hmm. eating pig's flesh. Mm -hmm. oh, wait, 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 wait. What? Wait, hold on. I thought pig was clean. 
This is the end times. They still. <laughs> That's what they told me. Well, hold on. They told me that swine, you can eat it now. But watch this. Keep reading that. Eating pig's flesh. Eating pig's flesh. And the abomination. And the, and the abomination. And that means the mice. No script. No lobster. No and the mice keep going. <laughs> uh, shall come to an end mm. together. You see that? So why keep eating it if you're going to come to an end with the stuff that you engage in and that's an abomination? It makes no sense. But they'll tell you this has already been fulfilled through Yeshua. Well, I just read some city coming down from there. I ain't see that yet. They said ain't going to be no more sea. I could still go and look for a sea today. And I don't see the lion eating straw. I don't I see these things. Keep going. And then 21 through 23? Yeah. And we done. And some of them also I will take for priests uh -huh. and for Levites. Wait, wait, you're going to restore what? Say that one more time. time. And some of them I will take for priests and for Levites, said Yah. Uh-huh. For as the new heavens and the new earth uh -huh. that I make shall remain before me, says Yah, uh -huh. so shall your offspring and your name remain. Ah. From new moon to new moon. What? And from Sabbath to Sabbath. Hold on. Wait, hold on. What you talking about? All flesh. No, 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 no. They told me no more new moons, no more Sabbaths. From new moon to new moon and from Sabbath to Sabbath, all flesh shall come to worship before me, declared so you Yah. You're going to go and get priests and Levites, and then you're going to put back the Sabbath and new moon, and then Zechariah says, you also going to have the Feast of Tabernacles. Wait, hold on. This sounds like the law to me, man. You want me to read 24 too? Yeah. And they shall go out and look on the dead bodies of the men who have rebelled against me. For their worms shall not die. Uh -huh. Their fire shall not be quenched. Uh -huh. And they shall be an, uh, an abhorrence to all flesh. Slow down. So what I simply want to do is we're done now. It's wrapping up. We already answered the question. I'm giving the addendum some additional information, for additional insight for those who subscribe to the Brie Hada Shah. What I'm telling you simply is this. There's no God the Son entity as purported and put forth by church fathers and then developed through modern Christianity. There's no second person of the Godhead, of the triune God that's co equal and co eternal to the Father, and they have the homo usi the same substance. We don't subscribe to it. We simply do a plain reading from the beginning of the book. That might be taboo today, I don't know. <laughs> And we work our way through the culture, through the history, through the spirituality. And then when we get to the so-called New Testament or Brit Hadashah or the Renewed Covenant, we see that that messenger of yod heh wah you know, the one that is a spirit that can also manifest as a man, it transitions into the world. The world cannot know or notice him or recognize him because every time somebody did see him, there was an awe. But he was in the world to work on behalf of Israel. Israel didn't notice him. So, Yeshua, you know, the body or the vessel used for it to come into, revealed him. And that happened during the sonship process when Yeshua was now inducted into the sons of Elohim. He became one of the holy ones or the watcher over Israel so he can be the earthly representative to execute the, judges on, uh, the justice on behalf of Yohewape, a.k.a. L. And now when this is occurring... He's also the high priest that can atone for the sins of all of those who are inducted in his order. He's, he's, he's giving you atonement so when the time comes, you set. You ain't got to go through all of this other craziness because he's going to atone for you in those days of time. We saw that in the 11Q13. And then ultimately in the end times, he's going to come back to fight and avenge what everybody did to Israel on behalf of Yodhei The nations will be judged through him. So we're not saying, I'm making this up to say, well, a man is God and all this other stuff. No, he has the power of Elohim. We see that. He's, he's a son of Elohim. So he has the power of a deity. He's been deified. We know that. Nobody disagrees with that, but we're saying that at one point in time, he was seated. It, didn't, it wasn't always there. He was given throne and the kingdom and the throne. He didn't always have it. Uh, do y'all understand what I'm saying? Yes. So now that messenger, it's the last will and testament, is to use this flesh from the loins of David in order to execute judgment against not only the divine counsel to clean the heavenly realm, but to purge the earth as well. Amen. Israel, you have a divine heritage that no other nation can lay claim to. 
even right. though you may be a base people in a diaspora in America, yeah. never for a second think that because you're not in Israel, that Yah's not I with know. you. That's he right. claimed oh. a people, right. not a place. Right. He's going to give you power oh. with his presence. So when we praise him, we can enthrone him in our hearts. So any challenge that comes before you has to bow before the mighty one of the most high. This is running through your genes. This is going through your blood. Your spirit is no longer yours anymore. Your life ain't yours anymore. When you allow him to fight and live through you, things will get that much more manageable. And it's only through you can he show the world what his character truly is. Don't make him do this in vain. Walk worthy of the calling that has been given unto you because you were chosen before your mother's womb. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.